And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who is guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, Bad Penny. cold rain whipped the windshield of the slowly moving car. At each turn, the face of the driver grows more bitter with memory. It's been a long time, hasn't it, Wick? A long time since you left this staid little west coast town, with the accusing eyes of the townspeople watching you go. Strange, they said. Strange that a boy could be so unlike his father, the respected owner of the successful Summers Mill. After your last scrape with the law, He'd sent you away. Now, having learned of your father's death, you've come back to the little town of Lansbury to claim what you're sure is legally yours. You wonder how much people will forgive as you pull up in front of the town's one hotel. You get out of the curb, shielding your face from the driving rain when... Oh, oh, oh. oh I'm awfully sorry. It's my fault, lady. I should have looked where I was going... I'll rescue your umbrella. Oh, thank you. I... Where? That's the name. It is you. Whitfield Summers. Well, at least I'm not a ghost. I, I guess you don't remember me. I'm Myra Rawson. Oh, of course. You were just a kid last time I saw you. <laughs> yes, I know. Look, there's no use out getting wet out of here. Come inside the lobby where we can talk. Well, just for a moment. No. <laughs> Oh, well, well, it looks like you're my welcoming committee. Uh, I suppose you've come back to settle your father's estate. Yeah, that seems like the general idea. Is your Uncle Josh expecting you? Yeah, I wired him last night. I'm your uncle's secretary. Well, certainly has an attractive one. <laughs> you haven't changed much in nine years. Eight years. Oh. And I'm a little wiser, I hope. You see, Myra, I've come back to Lansbury with only the best of intentions. I'm going to settle down and prove myself to everyone. Good. Um, Uncle Josh, didn't he invite you to stay at the house? Oh, yeah, yeah, but I don't want to impose. I want to be, to be sure before accepting it. I believe you'll get along fine, Whit. Well, i got to run now. Goodbye, Whit. See you soon. Oh, sure, Myra. We'll see lots of each other. Yes, Whit. Myra is interesting, isn't she? But during the night, you begin to wonder about Uncle Josh, a stern, unyielding man. It was he who had urged your father to disinherit you that dark moment in your life eight years ago. But you're certain your father didn't take that final step, and that there's little Uncle Josh can do now to jeopardize your position. The next morning, as you enter his office, you're not surprised at his greeting. Well, Whit. So the bad penny comes bouncing back. Uncle Josh, I want you to know that I've come back determined to make a new life for you and forget the past. <laughs> I'm relieved to hear that, and we're going to give you the best opportunities to prove it. Oh, uh, come in, Jimmy, come in. I believe this is what you wanted, Mr. Summers. Thank you. Whit, I want you to meet Jimmy Bentley. Jimmy, this is Whitfield Summers. How do you do? Welcome back, Mr. Summers. Oh, just call me Whit. Okay. <laughs> We've heard a lot about you, Whit. 
Say, come to think of it, don't I remember you? Perhaps. Your father took me into the company several years ago. I owe everything to him. Your father financed Jimmy's education, Whit. He regarded Jimmy almost as a son, since his own son seemed to have deserted him. Well, well I'm glad he had someone. But what's all this leading to? The papers Jimmy brought me are your father's last will and testament. Of course, you are interested. Um, naturally, Uncle John. You're very fortunate, my boy. Your father left his entire holdings to you. <laughs> well, that's no surprise. Well? Uh, but let me call your attention to this clause. And please listen carefully so there'll be no misunderstanding. However, until such a time as my son proves himself a competent person according to the provisions... I do hereby name Josh Summers as sole executor of my estate. So father named you as executor? Yes, Rick, he did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you to have uh, uh, assistance in determining when I'm competent, Uncle Josh, or do you use your own judgment? The decision rests entirely with me. Until that time, the estate remains entirely in my hands. Well, then I guess I'll just have to prove myself to you. How long do you think that ought to take? It depends on you. But you can be certain I'll be fair. Deserve your father's respect for my judgment. Oh, I'm sure you will. Well, I guess that's that. Oh, if anything happens to me, who gets the mills, Uncle Josh? You? No. Jimmy Bentley here is next in line after you. Your father thought a great deal of Jimmy. He must have. Tough luck for you. I came back, I guess, huh? Oh, no. I... I'm glad you're back. Really, it's what your father would have wanted. Well, I'm glad you feel that way, Jim. Anything else, Uncle? No. I'm sure you'll want to start in at the mill just as anyone else and be promoted on merit alone. Right. Let me know when you're ready to prove your set. <laughs> Are you becoming a blame shifter? Here's what I mean. If your car doesn't spring to life these days, the moment you touch the starter, don't start flaming your car. Try a tank full of signal ethyl. If your car's pickup doesn't make other drivers cast envious glances in your direction when the traffic light says go, don't blame your car. Try a tank full of signal ethyl. And if loss of power is forcing you to shift on hills that other cars walk up in high, don't blame your car. Try a tank full of signal ethyl. After all, the performance any car delivers can be only as good as the gasoline you use to power it. And signal ethyl, the premium grade of signal's famous go-farther gasoline, is a true super fuel, scientifically engineered to bring out the best in any car of any age, whether it's brand new or pre-war too. So, if you're not happy about the way your car is acting, don't blame the car. Drive into a signal station. See if a tank full of signal ethyl doesn't surprise you. With performance, you can be proud of. Josh Summers is the sole executor of your father's estate. Until such time as he alone decides that you're, uh, competent. You decide to remain permanently at the hotel, so that you won't see your uncle too often while trying to win the friendship and trust of the people of Lansbury. Take an active part in business and social affairs. But it isn't easy, is it, Will? After a few weeks, you'd almost give it up if it weren't for mine. And your interest in her seems to set everyone against you, too. Even your uncle seems obviously displeased when he sees you with her. And in the days that follow, you'll learn how much the citizens of Lansbury resent it. <laughs> You're going to have to practice that step a little bit. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm out of practice with this sort of dancing. I hope you don't mind. Of course, I don't. Try again now. Oh, sure. <laughs> you know, Myra, I never knew any girls like you back in New York. You mean the country cousin type? <laughs> oh, is that what they call it? <laughs> well, we must have labels. Oh, hello, Mrs. Huxley. Good evening, my dear. Where's Jimmy tonight? Why, 
he's working late. Oh, such a conscientious boy. Oh, I don't believe you two have met. Mrs. Huxley, this is Whitfield Summers. Oh. You're Whitfield Summers. I'm very glad to meet well, you. Well, I must be running, Mara. Say hello to Jimmy, won't you? He's such a fine young man. Loring? Yes? I've been referred to you as the president of the bank. I uh, want to transfer my balance from New York, and as long as I'm going to live here, we might as well get acquainted. I see. Uh, and your name? Uh, Summers, Whitfield Summers. Whitfield Summers. Oh, yes. I saw you the other evening. You were with Jimmy Bentley, girlfriend Myra Ross. Uh, just a moment, please. I'll have one of the tellers take care of <laughs> They're making it more difficult for you than you'd ever dreamed, aren't they, Whit? The town hasn't forgotten. To them, you're still the bad penny. But there's still the summer's fortune, too. And you're all the more determined that it will be yours as soon as possible. Then one evening at the office. Well, Whit, I see you're working late again this evening. Best way I know to learn the business from the ground up, Uncle Josh. I've admired your attitude lately. I know it hasn't been easy for you these past few weeks. Thanks. But I've about decided to give you a new opportunity. I need a man to spend a week up the coast to contact some bigger customers. Think you're up to it? Well, uh, if you think so, there's, there's nothing I'd like better. We'll discuss it later. Right now, I want to talk to you about something else. Uh, come into my office, Fred. Why all the secrecy? Jimmy Bentley is working here late tonight, too. Jimmy? Yes. Uh, I'll put it straight, Whit. Uh, Whit, people are talking. Have they ever stopped? You've been seeing a lot of Myra lately, haven't you? Why, yes. She's about the nicest person I've met in the whole town. My boy, Jimmy and Myra are practically engaged. Well, maybe so, Uncle Josh, but a girl has a right to change her mind. I was afraid you'd take that attitude. Now, Uncle Josh, there's nothing in the will that specifies with whom I fall in love. No, providing that it is love and not just a whim. You've been here a very short time, Whit. I'd have to feel a lot surer of you than I do to let you persuade Myra to break off her engagement. I wouldn't want to see Myra hurt. Now, look, Uncle Josh, if you think I'm out... Who is it? It's Jimmy, Mr. Summer. Uh, just a minute. Come in, Jimmy. You might as well. We were discussing you and Myra. It seems I'm providing Lansbury with some real juicy gossip. Well, I... I'm sorry, Whit. I... I guess you didn't know how things stood with Myra and me. Well, my solicitor's uncle has made that quite clear. No hard feelings, I hope. No? No hard feelings. Good night. It's infuriating, isn't it, Whit? You feel that your uncle has gone one step too far. You know that you've got to find a way to settle all this. But first you determine to have a showdown with Myra. You pick her up in your car and drive to a quiet spot outside of town where you can talk. Oh. Now, why didn't you tell me, Myra? About Jimmy and me? Yeah. I didn't think it mattered at first. At first? Mm. Not to begin with. I just wanted you to be happy here when you came back. I knew that it would be difficult. Oh, thank you for the nice sisterly attitude. I'm afraid it isn't that anymore, Hope. What? I think I've fallen in love with you. Myra. I guess I knew it would happen all along. Oh, why, baby? Tell me. Uh, see, when I was a kid, I I had a terrific crush on a guy named Whit Summers. Even when he was going through all that trouble those eight years ago. Oh, I wish I'd known it. I'm crazy about you, Myra. What can we do about it? Uncle Josh won't make it any easier for me if I see you again. He's not there. He's old and... I should feel sorry for him. He's sick. Twice this week, I found him asleep with a burning cigarette on his bed. I'm very touched. I suppose you know he's sending me out of town for a week, just trying to separate us every chance he gets. Myra, what does the doctor say about Uncle Josh? He says the long hours of work at the mill have been too much for him. And the cigarettes. 
After all, the radio started a fire in his den while he was asleep. You know, that could happen very easily, Myra. Very easily. Where? What's to become of us? I don't love Jimmy anymore. Oh, darling, just trust me. We'll get out of this yet. You'll see. Well, Whit, it remains for Myra to suggest the one idea that will solve all your problems. Isn't it? A sure way to rid yourself of Uncle Josh's domination. He goes through with his plans to send you north for a week. And the days alone give you a chance to think your plan through, weigh each possibility. Then when you return to Lansbury, the desk clerk at your hotel tells you that your uncle's housekeeper has been calling. That it's very urgent. Oh, hello, Mrs. Adams. This is Whit. Pretty bad, is it? Well, the doctor says he'll be all right if he keeps quiet. But he's flat on his back, unable to move without my help. Well, that's too bad. Can you put him on the phone? Leaving now. The doctor says not to disturb him. But he's got a phone by his bed if you want to call him later on. I'll call him in a couple of hours. You've been very thoughtful, Mrs. Adams. Bye. <laughs> and very helpful. Accident with. And it couldn't have happened at a better time, could it? Your uncle, helpless in his bed, with only the half deaf Mrs. Adams in the house with him. You remember what Myra told you of how Uncle Josh so often falls asleep with a burning cigarette in his hand, a fact everyone knows. You wait impatiently till you're certain the housekeeper is retired. Then, at 9 30 that night, you call your uncle's number. Uncle Josh, it's Whit. When did you get in? A little while ago. Mrs. Adams told me about your accident, Uncle Josh. I'm awfully sorry. But may I see you tonight, though, now? It's rather late, Whit. Can't it wait till morning? Well, it's kind of important. It's, um, uh, it's about Myra and me. Oh. Well, in that case, perhaps you'd better come over. Right away, Uncle Josh. That uh, back door downstairs is always open. Just let yourself in. I'll be there. Myra and I have talked it over, and we've decided you were right. I have no right to see you anymore. Oh, I'm glad you feel that way. You have a lot of good qualities, Whit. You're stubborn, but all the summers are. I'm anxious to see your report about that trip north. But uh, that can wait until... Whit, hmm? are you listening? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Uncle. I didn't get much sleep last night. It was a long trip, Maybe if I went downstairs and mixed myself a drink. By all means. No, oh, thanks. Go ahead. I'm, I'm sure it'll help. Yes, Whit, it will help. You take a long time downstairs making the drink. Also find it a good time to make certain Mrs. Adams isn't stirring about. Then you return to your uncle's bedroom, walking softly. Just as you'd expect it. He's fallen sound asleep again. You touch his arm. Uncle Josh? Mm -hmm. Now's the time, isn't it, Rick? You place a burning cigarette on the ashtray near his bed. Drop a lighted match into the wastebasket nearby. Watch the flames reach to the curtains. And you slip downstairs silently and let yourself out the back door. No one sees you hurry the short distance to your parked car. You settle back behind your steering wheel. You wait only long enough to see the sudden reddening in the sky. And then... <laughs> good night, Uncle Josh, and goodbye. Well, 
I'd say that completes the investigation as far as the insurance company is concerned. Uh, Mrs. Adams, uh, you say you warned the old gentleman about smoking in bed? Oh, yes, Mr. Wilcox. I understand he'd been warned many times, Mr. Wilcox. Yes, it's a risky thing to do. To hold up a ring in the house, completely gutted. Good thing the neighbors put in the alarm. Why, I might have slept right through. Poor old Mr. Summers. I'd say you're lucky to be alive yourself, Mrs. Adams. Yes, I would do. Now, let me see, uh... Mr. Summers, uh, you'll be handling everything now, and uh, can you locate the insurance policy for me? Oh, yes, I'm sure it'll be at the office, and I'll... On second thought, um, if you talk to Mr. Benton, to Jimmy Benton... Oh? Up to now, he's handled the personal affairs of uh, Uncle Josh. You understand, I don't want to appear to, to well, take over so abruptly. Well, that's very considerate of you, Mr. Summers. Oh, I don't think so. And Jimmy's a good boy. Yes, well, uh, where will I locate him? I'd like to finish things up and leave town tonight if I can. Well, Jimmy's probably at the office. And... No, this is Tuesday. I guess he's over at the businessmen's club. Thanks, I'll find him. And, uh, Mr. Summers, uh, you'll be hearing from me again on oh. the settlement. Anything else that might come up. Uh, you've inherited quite a business, haven't you, Mr. Summers? Yes, I, I suppose I have. Good day, Mr. Wilcox. <laughs> You want to get away from them, don't you, Whit? Mr. Wilcox, Mrs. Adams, and especially Jimmy Benton. Yes. For the present, you're happy to let Jimmy handle all the details so that you'll be free for a most important meeting with Myra. You call her as soon as possible to arrange it. Hello? Myra, it's Whit. Well, there have been a lot of things, Myra, you know, questioning and all. Questioning? You don't mean there was anything wrong about your Uncle Josh's death? Oh, no, no, just routine. Matter of fact, that's why I called. I I shoved the details out of Jimmy's shoulder. Mr. Wilcox, the insurance man, will be talking to him for the next few hours. Oh, I'm glad. Well, you need to try to see me. Jimmy, I'm I, I just can't say things. I know, darling, but in a week or so, it'll, it'll be out in the open. You'll be married and then... Wait. Yes. Wait, could we just tonight, the two of us? Try to see each other and be married. I, I, I don't know. It's pretty soon after Uncle's death. People here won't understand any better later on. I know they won't. A small town. Who should know better than you how they are? That's right. All right, Myra, we'll do it. Right away? Tonight? Tonight, yes. I'll pick you up at your place. Make and... it around 8. I'll have the house dark. Then in case Jimmy drops by around 7.30 like he usually does, he'll think I'm out and leave. <laughs> Good idea. When you come, drive all the way back to the garage. I'll come out the door and put my clothes in your car. We'll go out through the alley in the rear. That way no one will see us leave. That right, sounds great. See you at 8 o'clock. I'll be ready, honey. We're really giving something to talk about. And won't little Jimmy be surprised? <laughs> How dangerous a driver are you? Regardless of how many safety rules you observe, you're still taking big chances on your life and the lives of others if you're driving on wet, slippery pavement with smooth, treadbare tires. What's more, safe new tires probably cost far less than you expect, thanks to the generous trade-in allowance signal dealers are now offering on nationally advertised Lee Tires. And when I say Lee, you know that for half a century there has been no tire finer. Today's Lee Super Deluxe tire, for instance, has an extra wide, extra flat, eight rib tread for added traction, plus extra quantities of rugged, cold rubber, which Lee toughens still further with patented Phil Black O. Result, you not only enjoy far quicker stopping and non-skid protection, but also such amazingly long wear, Lee backs this Super Deluxe tire with two guarantees. A 15-month road hazard guarantee, plus a lifetime guarantee against defects. So, play safe this rainy season. Find out now how little it will cost to replace your smooth, dangerous old tires with safe, rugged, new Lee tires, proudly featured and guaranteed by 19,000 dealers throughout America, including all signal service stations. <laughs>
As Whitfield Summers had promised, the town of Lansbury did have something to talk about. The murder of a prominent citizen. When the Lansbury police found the dead man in the wrecked car at the bottom of the cliff facing near the ocean, their first conclusion was that the victim had met his death as the result of an unfortunate accident, due perhaps to a mud shoulder on the road from the recent torrential rain. But next day at the coroner's inquest, unexpected, unexpected testimony from an eyewitness revealed a startlingly different picture. You say, Mr. Wilcox, if you were trying to find Jimmy Bentley. That's right. Whit Summers told me himself to see Bentley regarding the policy covering the fire at Dr. Summers. I went to the businessmen's club and he just left. Later I went to his office and he wasn't there either. How did you happen to go to Miss Ralston's house last night? Well, one of the girls in the office told me young Bentley was in the habit of calling on Miss Ralston every evening. So I decided to have dinner at the hotel and then take a cab out to her house. And is that what you did, Mr. Wilcox? Yes, sir. When I reached Miss Ralston's cottage, it was quite dark. So I rang the front door bell, but uh, nobody answered. I figured nobody was in and started back to the cab. That's right, Mr. Carner. I was waiting my cab for Proceed, Mr. Wilcox. Well, as I was walking toward the cab, I heard some sounds from the back of the house. I decided to take a look. When I got about halfway back, what I saw stopped me cold. I hid in the side doorway and watched. I saw a man and a woman carrying a body. As they opened the car door, the uh, interior light flashed on, and I recognized uh, this man and this woman. Now, this man got into the car with a body and drove away through the alley. Then this woman followed him in her car. Then what did you do? Well, I notified the police. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. With your evidence added to that of the police, I'm quite certain the jury will have enough evidence for an indictment of first-degree murder against Myra Rawson and Jimmy Bentley in the killing of Whitfield Thomas. Do you care to make any statement, Mr. Bentley? No. You might as well admit it, Jimmy. Mr. Wilcox must have had rather thought. We've known you for a long time now. Why did you kill the two of them? Quite simply. Jimmy and I were in love. Jimmy was next in line to become his inheritance. And we decided that nothing, not even Whit Summers, was going to prevent us from getting it. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Meantime, Signal Oil Company and the friendly independent dealers who help you go farther with Signal Gasoline hope you'll remember. Regardless of what gasoline you use, you'll enjoy more miles of happy driving if you drive at sensible speeds, obey traffic regulations, and avoid taking chances. You may even save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman as the Whistler, Larry Dobkin, Gene Bates, Norma Varden, Norman Field, Harley Bear, and Jess Kirkpatrick. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Margaret Solenson, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler was entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on the Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember to tune in at the same time next Sunday when the Signal Oil Company will bring you another strange story by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>